After setting the scene by introducing the topic of how the Qur'an speaks about the night and speaking about some of the many threats that come about when the sun sets and also addressing one of those safeguarding mechanisms for ourselves and for our families namely the recitation of Ayatul Kursi Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum Before going to sleep, let us proceed with a second safeguarding mechanism against shaitan and the threats that come with the night. The element of remembering Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when entering your home. Even if you're entering your home 10 times a day, in and out, in and out, say the name of Allah. Remember the name of Allah in the form of Bismillah or something to that effect when entering your home. This will be an active form of protection. How come? That is because Imam Muslim narrates on the authority of the companion Jabir that the Messenger وسلم, said, when a person enters his home and he remembers the name of Allah, Shaytan will say to his friends, لا مبيت لكم ولا عشاء. You don't have a place to stay here this evening and you don't have any food either. Allahu Akbar. This is not our place. This will not be our bed and breakfast this evening. If however he said, i.e. the Prophet وسلم, you enter your home and you don't say Bismillah, Shaytan will say to his friends, you found your resting place this evening, we'll spend the night here. And if you do not say Bismillah upon eating, upon eating, Shaytan will say to his friends, you have found your resting place this evening and you have found some food as well, Allahu Akbar. Yes, we want to be generous hosts, dear brothers and sisters, but not to Shaytan. So this is a key safeguarding mechanism, number two, to remember Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala when entering your home. Say Bismillah and ensure that all of your family members say Bismillah, like the hadith which Abu Dawood narrates in his Sunan. The Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would say upon entering his home, Bismillahi walajna, in the name of Allah Almighty we have entered. Wa bismillahi kharajna, and in the name of Allah Almighty we leave. Wa ala rabbina tawakkalna, and upon our Lord we rely. Allahu Akbar. Then the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam would greet his family. Encourage every one of your family members to say this upon entering your home. On this note, there is an amazing story which Imam al Dhahabi narrates regarding the famous scholar of hadith, Yahya ibn Ma'in. Imam Yahya, he said that every time I would enter my home, I made it a habit that I would recite Ayatul Kursi, Allahu la ilaha illa huwa al-hayyul qayyum, five or so times upon my family and for the benefit of my home. And this became a habit in my life. On one particular evening, I entered my house, I recited this verse, this ayah, and I heard somebody speaking to me, saying to me, Kam taqra hada? Why do you keep reciting this? It's as if nobody knows how to recite except you. Yahya ibn Ma'in knew exactly what that sound was all about. And he said, in response, Imam Yahya said, it seems as if my recitation is bothering you. So I will tell you what, I will increase it to make things difficult for you. And so Yahya, he said, I would then recite Ayatul Kursi upon entering my home 50 to 60 times. Allahu Akbar. He recognized that was Shaytan, who was being very much bothered and annoyed by the frequency of his recitation of Ayatul Kursi. Another safeguarding measure, dear brothers and sisters, from Shaytan for ourselves and from our families to protect ourselves from the threats of the night. When going to sleep, the Messenger وسلم, has told us in the authentic hadith that Bukhari documents that when one of us goes to sleep, shaitan approaches each and every one of us and ties three knots at the back of our heads. And he says, speaking or blowing into each of those knots like the works of a magician, Allahu Akbar, he speaks into these three knots saying, Nam, layluka tawil, go to sleep. Relaxed, you've got a long night ahead of you, subhanallah. And he does this to all three knots. In other words, he doesn't want you to wake up for your fajr salah. He's making every effort to prevent you and I from praying our qiyam, from praying our qiyam, our midnight prayer. And so the Messenger وسلم, he said that if somebody wakes up and remembers Allah, one of those three knots is undone. La ilaha illallah. If you go to the bathroom and you do wudu, you carry out the ablution, the second of the two knots 
is undone. If you pray something, then the third of the three knots is undone, and therefore he said you will wake up feeling nashitan. You will feel energetic and strong and enthusiastic, tayyib and nafsi, and very content and happy. Otherwise, you will be khabith and nafsi kaslan. You will feel lethargic and lazy and unenthusiastic for the rest of the day. So this is another safeguarding measure. When going to sleep and waking up, this is a key thing to do. To remember Allah, to carry out your wudu, and to, and to pray something before carrying out your day-to-day -day duties. There is another safeguarding measure, dear brothers and sisters. I want you to memorize this particular dua. And I think a lot of people will hear this dua for the very first time. It's a narration that Ahmad narrates in his Musnad on the authority of the companion Abdul Rahman ibn Khanbash that a man once asked him, how did the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam behave on the night when the devils plotted against him? كَيْفَ صَنَعَ رَسُولُ اللَّهِ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ حِينَ كَادَتْ لَهُ الشَّيَاطِينَ What did he do on that night when they all conspired against him? It was a difficult evening for our beloved sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And so the companion Abdul Rahman responded by saying that that was a night when devils came to the Messenger وسلم, from the valleys and the mountain passes and they all came against him and one particular shaitan who was carrying in his hand an ember or a flame wanting to throw it in the face of the Messenger وسلم, and here Angel Jibreel would descend to support the Prophet Muhammad and he said to the Messenger Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Qul, say, say. And he said, what should I say? He said to him, Qul, a'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tamat. Memorize these words. Say, a'udhu bi kalimati Allahi tamat. I seek refuge with the perfect words of Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala. Min sharri ma khalaqa wa dhara'a wa bara' From the evil of everything that Allah Almighty has created. وَمِنْ شَرِّ مَا يَنْزِلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ مَا يَعْرُجُ فِيهَا And from the evil of everything that descends from the heavens and the evil of everything that ascends into the heavens وَمِنْ شَرِّ مَا ذَرَأَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ مَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا And from the evil of every evil that is sown and from the evil of everything that is sown within the soil, and the evil of everything that comes out of the soil, وَمِنْ شَرِّ فِتَنِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ And from the evil of the night and the day, وَمِنْ شَرِّ كُلِّ طَارِقٍ إِلَّا طَارِقًا يَطْرُقُ بِخَيْرٍ يَا رَحْمَانِ And from the evil of everything that comes knocking, except that which comes knocking with goodness, O oh Rahman, O oh Most Merciful. What was the outcome when he said this dua? The narrator says, فَطَفِئَتْ نُورُهُمْ وَهَزَمَهُمُ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى And therefore he said their lights of the devils, their fire, their embers were extinguished and Allah Almighty defeated them. La ilaha illallah. Let us repeat the dua just in Arabic. أَعُوذُ بِكَلِمَاتِ اللَّهِ التَّامَّاتِ أَلَّتِي لَا يُجَاوِزُهُنَّ بَرٌ وَلَا فَاجِرٌ مِنْ شَرِّ مَا خَلَقَ وَذَرَأَ وَبَرَأَ وَمِنْ شَرِّ مَا يَنْزِلُ مِنَ السَّمَاءِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ مَا يَعْرُجُ فِيهَا وَمِنْ شَرِّ مَا ذَرَأَ فِي الْأَرْضِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ مَا يَخْرُجُ مِنْهَا وَمِنْ شَرِّ فِتَنِ اللَّيْلِ وَالنَّهَارِ وَمِنْ شَرِّ كُلِّ طَارِقٍ إِلَّا طَارِقًا يَطْرُقُ بِخَيْرٍ يَا رَحْمَانِ It's important to note, brothers and sisters, that these safeguarding measures, these statements, these actions that we alluded to earlier, and others that you will come across in like the fortress of the Muslim booklet that I recommend you benefit from. These remembrances are not merely a protection from the physical effects and the harms of shaitan, but rather they are a means of protection from the intangible harms that may come in my direction or yours. An inability to enjoy the sweetness of salah, an inability to lower the gaze, our lack of ability, say, to pray at night, uh, our weakness when confronting doubtful arguments and strange matters and how it sometimes shakes our hearts. All of these elements that we are speaking about are protection against these immaterial things as well, not just the physical harms. You are able to be a far more productive and successful person during your daylight hours 
by mentioning and acting upon these things, it's not just a protection against physical harm. And I give you just one example and we will conclude with this. Malik ibn Dinar was a man who had pretty much renounced the life of this world and his home was barely furnished with anything. He didn't want much, he didn't possess much. On one particular night, there was a thief that came creeping into his house wanting to steal and Malik saw him. And he noticed that he began rummaging around, he didn't find anything worthy, worthy of being stolen. So he was making his way back out, so Malik called him, Salaamu Alaikum. The man said, Wa Alaikum Salaam. He said to him, brother, it's obvious that you didn't find anything in my house uh, worthy of uh, being stolen. So would you like to take something that will benefit you in the hereafter instead? He said, yeah, certainly. He said, go to that sink over there, do your wudu, wash yourself and ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to forgive you. Subhanallah. So he did that. The man said to him, do you mind if I spend the rest of the evening with you? And Malik ibn Dinar said to him, no, I don't mind at all. So he spent that evening with him. And then they woke up for Salatul Fajr, the early dawn prayer. And Malik brought him with him to the mosque. And he would usually go to the mosque by himself. So people were like, who is your guest? Who is this man, O Malik? He said, this is a man who came to steal from us, so we stole him instead. This is a man who came to steal from us, so we stole him instead. The point of mentioning this, dear brothers and sisters, is what was it that gave him this composure during this quite a dramatic scene? When a thief came creeping into his home, it was the likes of these remembrances that give you steadfastness and stability and composure and clarity of mind during the challenges that you and I experience by night and by day as well, Allahu Akbar.